All right, so we had just gotten done talking about interferon, uh, alpha and beta, and then also tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-1 uh, are really a lot of the main uh, antimicrobial proteins that are activated with viral infection. A um, couple of uh, time afterwards in this context is saying days, uh, we have natural killer cells are going to come in, they're going to start killing the infected cell, and let's just say that they can't clear up that infection, then we'll have activation of the T cells, and T cells kill, they <laughs> kill everything. Um, so here's a diagram just showing the uh, cells that are being virally infected and they're getting activation of the interferon response which is something that we had just talked about in another video. So these interferons are going to cause natural killer cells to come to the site. They're going to start dividing, proliferating, and then they're actually going to start maturating into their cytotoxic effector cells. So they're going to develop into the effector cells. And what they do is a really, really interesting mechanism, which we'll hopefully we'll get to talk about. They bind one cell at a time and kill the cells one cell at a time. Um, so they're very specific, they're very powerful, but they're not super, 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 super... Uh, uh, they don't cast a wide net. They do it one at a time. So... Um, one of the things that we'll also talk about as well, so nothing in the immune system works as a one-way, one-thing uh, pathway. Everything has multiple dynamic factors. And so just how these are going to kill cells, they're not going to clean up that, that, that infection. So we need macrophages there as well, but macrophages also to, fight, to help uh, fight off the infection as well. So macrophages are going to be activated by the viral infection from, from the natural killer cells. Um, to recruit, uh, it secretes inflammatory or cytokines that recruit and stimulate natural killer cells. So remember, macrophages are resident macrophages. They're tissue specific. So say this was an infection in my lungs. Macrophages are going to attack that. They're going to start secreting interleukin-12, which is going to bind to the natural killer cell, along with CXCL8 as a chemokine to get them to the, the site of infection. So interleukin-12 is going to activate them, CXCL8 is going to tell them where to go, and that's all brought about by our friends, the macrophages. So then uh, natural killer cells are going to form something called the synapse, which is kind of similar to up here, how they destroy things, but they basically, this is just a close contact thing for communication. Um, so, so, which were interleukin-12 and interleukin-15 are going to activate the natural killer cells. So macrophages here are producing interleukin-15 and interleukin-12 at the synapse. This is going to really prime them and get them ready to fight this infection. So here they're going to proliferate and differentiate. And once they're differentiated, they start secreting something known as interferon gamma or type 2 interferons. Type 2 interferons are going to bind to macrophages um, and activate them to start producing inflammatory cytokines and we're right back here where we started off with. So this interaction between natural killer cells and macrophages is a positive feedback loop where the end product keeps the reaction going and makes it go faster and faster and faster. It's almost like this logarithmic thing. 2 becomes 4, 4 becomes 16, and so on and so forth. So we can very quickly get a lot of cells recruited to this area. The other thing that natural killers do, uh, cells do that's really important is the way that they interact at, at controlling the decision, basically, whether or not we should call the adaptive immune system for help. So some people actually call the natural killer cells the T cells of the innate immune system, and I really like that because they play a huge role in this in this controlling here situation. And that's what this diagram is, is showing in this picture. So let's say that we have something like this. This is this would be an example of here. This would be a, say that we have a viral infection. Go ahead and include that here. So we have a viral infection here. And what's happening is the activation, proliferation, and differentiation of natural killer cells is being driven by dendritic cells. Dendritic cells, as you know, sample up their environments and then they present the antigens on their surface. So if they're presenting antigens on their surface, that's going to cause the differentiation of natural killer cells because natural killer cells are identified pathogen-associated molecular patterns as well. Um, also, though, 
they're going to start to produce interleukin, interleukin 15, um, which is something that you'll notice that macrophages do because dendritic cells and macrophages are kind of closely related. They're both phagocytic and they're both able to undergo antigen presentation. So this is viral infection where we're recruiting uh, the natural killer cells to differentiate and to fight off the infection. So let's say that we fight off the infection and the innate immune system is winning. They win. Winning. Is there three ends in there? Anyways, so the innate immune system is winning. If the innate immune system is winning, what they're going to actually do, and this is probably not the most metabolically efficient thing to do, but there's going to be a lot of natural killer cells if they're winning, right? So what they're going to do is they're going to kill dendritic cells so that those dendritic cells don't go to uh, the, activate the adaptive immunity. I don't know why we couldn't just secrete some type of a cytokine or something that would make them stop leaving the tissue space, but uh, dendritic cells have to die for us not to recruit the adaptive immune system. And so just by we said here if they were winning, let's imagine what would happen if the innate immune system was was losing that battle with the infection. Well, then there's going to be a very, very scarce amount of natural killer cells. In this context, you see there's only one and there's a lot of other dendritic cells. So they're going to want to uh, activate dendritic cells and make them go and call for help um, and then the adaptive immune response would be be brought in into the situation coming into the fray here.